All right, thanks for joining me. We're gonna jump into another webinar here, another master class on how to collect option premium. We have some unique uh, proprietary trading technology and a solution for trading option spreads. You've never seen this before. So we'll be glad to get this show on the road and tell you more about our pre-built options trading uh, with spreads, our automated risk profit management, We'll look for hedging, uh, directional, non-directional strategies, any market environment, and then you're going to want to make sure you see those one-touch trade alerts. Remember, we are speculating, and we're always taking risk when we're trying to make money. That's what speculation is all about. So with that in mind, do take a moment here and read that risk disclosure. It is important. Remember that all funds committed should be risk capital when you're trading and past performance is no guarantee of future results. So this is what you call a lot of back and forth choppy action here. How would you ever figure out how to sell at the highs and buy the lows and really navigate through that mess? Well, we don't even try. We've got strategies and we're using algos and automation that will hopefully make our lives a lot easier. You want to end up like this robot here with everything already handled for you. A little bit about who we are. We are AltaVest. We've been doing this since 1997. We're an introducing brokerage firm. We've traded countless millions of contracts over the years and decades of experience. We're registered with the CFTC, members of the NFA, and we're located in California. So again, don't try to figure out everything by yourself. Use our experience and guidance. We're gonna show you something that's been really developed over uh, decades with all the input from veteran traders. A little bit about myself. I am Eric Gebhardt. I've been doing this about over 30 years now. I'm a founder of, co-founder of AltaVest. And since 1991, I've been licensed. I have my BS in Business Administration from the University of Southern California. Perhaps you've seen some of our other presentations and other venues in the past. And I was uh, back in the mutual fund industry out of graduation. I had my series six and 63 securities licenses. And then I jumped into the commodity futures space with my series three license. And also I have my series 65, that's the investment advisor law uh, license as well. Okay, so now we've got some of those introductions out of the way, and we're going to shut off that webcam for the moment, give you more room on the screen. And let's jump into these three hurdles or barriers. I think we can all relate to this, so let me know. Jump in there. Let me know which ones you can relate to the most. And I think probably all, all of them are equally relatable. So how do you trade in this type of environment? Are you gonna be day trading, maybe stock picking? Well, it's not that easy, folks. There's a less than 1% success rate for day trading. And is that really true? What am I talking about? Here's an article, and we're gonna look at just a couple of quotes here. Charles Schwab looked at their actively traded accounts over a six year period of time. And those active traders substantially underperformed a simple low cost index fund. And here's another study out of Taiwan, 15 year period. 1% uh, of day traders were able to consistently beat the market. And then here out of Brazil, 3% of the day traders made money, but less than 1% made more than the minimum wage. Not that easy to day trade folks. And even the professionals struggle almost, uh, what is it, 90, 79% of active fund managers are underperforming their benchmarks. That's through 2021 over a 10 year period of time, 80%, 86% underperformed. So how do we go about trading in this environment? Maybe social media is the answer. Social media stars are moving markets. They want to be popular. That means they're always bullish, never criticizing a stock. Maybe we should take advice from a guy like this, showing us his Rolls Royce, talking about uh, crypto here. Or maybe that's not such a good idea. So the pandemic day trader army, if you uh, didn't realize there was a huge surge of day trading activity as people were at home, 
but these amateur investors jumped in when the lockdowns began and they now have given back all their once uh, prodigious gains, according to Morgan Stanley. So, for example, here's this poor guy here. He had $500,000 from his parents to trade in the stock market, and this is the result. Um, so, not good, folks. Let's not do that. Or maybe we listen to the, uh, quote, experts and pundits on TV, maybe like Jim Cramer or the ARC Innovation Fund, maybe you should just buy and passively hold that. March 25 of this year, Jim Cramer says the bear market's over. Well, is he right? That's where he talked about the bear market being over and subsequently, uh, I think the market dropped another, uh, boy, I should have done the math on that, but I think it was something like 25%, uh, NASDAQ at least. And another comment, Nike's got a bullish tone to it. As soon as he said that, it lost, um, oh boy, about six points. And yeah, to keep picking on Kramer, he says here, to buy the dip in oil stocks, this is when he suggested to buy that dip and oil's not going down. And then of course, we've been dropping ever since. So maybe that's not the right answer. Maybe an innovation high tech fund has the answer, nope. Not not going to work either. Here's the result of uh, ARC. Here we are since last year, on uh, since the beginning of this year. So even these professionals and experts get it terribly, terribly wrong. Maybe jumping into crypto and just hodling. <laughs> I think that's just... Uh, Part of the meme uh, universe, the HODL, I think it was just a misspelling is how that started. Well, not so fast here. Crypto investment firm lost 99% of customer funds. Here you go, another bankrupt uh, hedge fund in crypto. Investors trying to recoup their assets. The co-founders are missing, they're unknown uh, whereabouts. They had $10 billion in March and now they're wiped out. So. There's a lot of storytelling and narrative trading going on, and we're going to avoid that, folks. We don't even want to get involved with that at all. But how can you actually trade these markets, or maybe you shouldn't try to trade them in a traditional sense? It turns out that uh, even maybe these monkeys here we're going to talk about are better than these professionals. It says here, on this hypothetical study, an average, on average, 96 of the 100 monkey portfolios beat a generic cap weighted index and outperformed the benchmark by 1.7% per year in these hypothetical uh, stock picking contests. There is your top manager right there. You need to hire that creature right away. All right, number three, emotions. All right, we've all got emotions, but clearly they can be our own worst enemy. You don't want to end up thinking uh, you know, that you know better than the market. It can be expensive trying to convince the markets that you are correct. So let's avoid this type of think thinking here. It's not going to do us any good. You want to stay off of this emotional roller coaster, optimistic, euphoric when you're making money, uh, despondent when you're not, optimism again. That's a wild ride. Stay off of that roller coaster. Motley Fool says, we become our worst financial enemy. Absolutely. There's confirmation, anchoring, and recency bias. We can all sort of relate to that in one way or another, but I think this image sums it up best. You know, when things are going great, we all tend to think we're a bit of a genius. Now, moving into algo trading, well, remember, robots don't have emotion and it turns out they're dominating the landscape. How so? Well, JP Morgan says that 90% of the US equity trading volume is systematic, meaning uh, machine-driven, uh, high-frequency trading, robot, whatever you want to call it. So that's what you call revolutionary trading. We're sort of in this era over here. This is where we came from not too long ago. It's a little video I took years ago, but I won't get into that. More than a couple seconds worth here. So that's what it used to look like. 
And now this is what trading looks like. No emotion, full automation, built-in risk control and profit controls. So we're gonna look at automated options, trading technology, strategies for any market condition, any stock market condition, including bearish, of course. And to do that, let's look at how insurance companies might trade options. Are there any parallels to how they operate? Well, sure. As you know, an insurance company gets paid premium to assume risk, and they're selling and managing time. They insure themselves by hedging. They're consistent and they're patient. They look at probabilities and math to inform them, statistics, actuarials. And let's look at some premium collection strategies for options. How can we collect premium just like an a, uh, insurance company might? Well, we're looking for base hits and going short or selling options. We also need to be consistent and patient, manage our risk, expecting to have losers. Manage reward as well, not getting greedy. We need the proper tools. And remember, don't swing for the fences. Uh, that's a low probability outcome. So these short option strategies where you collect premium, they can be non-directional, bullish, or bearish. So these are targeted outcomes with pre determine risk. It's called a credit spread. Again, these are insured positions, predetermined risk and reward. And they could be non-directional or directional in nature. And we're going to look at stock futures index options, not stock options. So we're going to trade an entire index because they're less volatile compared to an individual stock. And it's easy to easy to apply a strategy on an index, whether it's bullish or bearish or non-directional. And then we're looking at just uh, an index is one market, or maybe uh, you know an index might have 2,000 stocks represented in it, or 500, or maybe 30. Uh, so it's easy to follow just that one or two, uh, those two indexes, rather than thousands of different stocks. Here's another advantage here. We have a wide margin of error on a lot of these non-directional strategies. Don't worry about this here, but let's look at the calls and the puts on this particular chart and you can see the market moving up and down in between those ranges. So that's a wide margin of error there for these types of strategies. And let's look at probabilities. Let's look at the Greeks. We're not going to go too deep into this, but we're going to tell you what you need to know. The delta, it's how much does the value of the option change as the underlying asset changes. It's also used as the approximate probability of expiring in the money for a particular option. So if the delta is 0.25, that's a 25% chance it expires in the money, but conversely, 75% chance it expires worthless. And of course, delta is always moving with price and time. And this is important here. It is not the probability of a winning trade. So keep that in mind too. <laughs> Now theta, let's look at theta here. Theta is time decay. And options are a wasting asset. They have limited lifespan. For example, theta is a negative number equals one day of time decay. So if an option's at 10 points and theta is negative 0.05, so the next day the premium drops to 9.95 and then 9.90 and so on and so forth, uh, all things remaining equal, of course, just looking at the time decay element. And here's a graph here of what that looks like. As you approach time zero, the percent of the premium remaining drops and drops and drops and drops. Eventually that option does expire. Now here's a, uh, a link I found, a video, I thought it was uh, worthwhile, so I put it in here. They're talking about options trading. She says the appeal for a lot of the retail investor is to buy options, is that they're much cheaper, but your potential for profit is actually not that high. An option spread calls for buying and selling different contracts. It's a very common way for investors to hedge risk and volatility. It's usually cheaper because you can offset your cost by the proceeds uh, from different contracts. And in 2021, 11% of Robinhood users made options trades, and of that, fewer than 1% actually made multi leg option trades. So these. Uh, Spreads here have been used by Wall Street professionals for decades. And let's take a look at what she's talking about. 
here's a call spread, two-legged spread, simple. This red line here, you go short, a 45.50 call, you collect four and a half points, put that in your wallet, but you simultaneously buy this blue line here, you pay two and a quarter for that 45.70 call, and so the net premium that you collect is $112.50 uh, minus your commissions, of course. So that's an example of simply selling a call spread and collecting the premium. Selling a put spread, same type of thing. You're just using puts. You sell a put, collect three points. You buy one for protection. You collect one. The net result is $100 minus your commission. And these are not naked options trading. These are always insured. Your maximum risk is capped. These are covered option spreads. So no naked options allowed, folks. Don't do it. Big advantages if you're doing covered spreads like we do, there won't be margin calls and it's not unlimited risk. Here's an iron condor spread. It's just a combination of the put and the call spread that we looked at. So you sell an out of the money call spread and an out of the money put spread simultaneously and you look for the market to stay in that range and meanwhile you uh, hopefully end up collecting premium on calls and puts now here's our proprietary strategy others have called it sort of weird but we like that that's a compliment it's a short option strategy called a dragonfly it's something we came up with years ago and it's six legs to collect option premium and it's very very simple in that it's a variation on a condor, but you might look at it and think it's complicated, but we're gonna show you how we make it really, really simple. And this is what it looks like here. So you sell uh, and buy calls and you sell and buy puts and the net result is still a net premium collection on the calls and the puts. And you sell four calls, you buy three th further out of the money puts, I'm sorry, calls and you buy one closer to the money call and you do the same structure on the put selling four buying three further out of the money and then buying one closer to the money now you'll notice the one that you buy here and here as well in this case is 50 points closer to the money compared to the four uh, puts that you sold and the four calls that you sold. So that completely changes the dynamic of this trade compared to a condor. And that's why we love it. And we're gonna show you uh, in the live demo here in just a second how that works. Then we have some other unique bearish uh, strategies and bullish strategies too. But here's a half a dragonfly. So that can be profitable on a stock index if the market goes sideways. Uh, decreases in price or maybe even moves modestly higher so here's what that looks like you can do just the call side of a dragonfly and of course uh, the risk would be if the market runs up too quickly too much and then we'll show you how to handle that same thing with another bearish strategy called a bear hedge a name we came up with years ago may gain in value as the stock index decreases so maybe if you have a large portfolio you might want to consider protecting some of it with some bear head strategies. Uh, let's take a look here. This is what it looks like. You're selling an out of the money call spread. You collect the premium for doing that. And with that money, you buy an out of the money put spread. It's just that simple. You can oftentimes uh, do this for even money or even a credit. So it doesn't cost you anything to put the trade on. But now you're thinking, what strikes do I choose? What market do I play, uh, trade with? What strategy do I apply? What's the correct price, you know, the timing? And then once I have the trade, how do I exit it? How do I close out that position, whether it's for a win or a loss? Well, the answer is Theta Trader. These are pre-built option strategies. Spreads, more specifically, our proprietary algo will create what we call Theta Trades on a daily basis. So advanced strategy automation, bull bear and flat market conditions, strategies for all the above and then we use automation something called the risk thermal indicator that's our proprietary indicator and we can automate your risk and profit management it's just that simple so let's look at theta trader simple effective option spreads and profit and risk management so we're going to jump into a demo and i need one moment if you don't mind to switch gears here
Okay, you're looking at the dashboard now for ThetaTrader and our demo account here. And let me explain some of these sections here, and then we'll jump into the demo. These are the Theta Trades. So the algo generates trades every day for us, and I'll show you how that works. These are your open short positions or, or sold spreads, like we just looked at, collecting premium. You can also buy options, uh, uh, outright long positions or spreads as well, and you can see a few here. And then here's some current price quotes, and then your account information. This is pulled directly from your AltaVest trading account here. Everything is integrated with your AltaVest account. So we'll look at the theta trades. You'll notice there are bullish strategies. They're all pre-populated, uh, bearish, and of course, non-directional or neutral. And we looked at some of those uh, non-directional strategies. So we're gonna jump in and look at some of these condors and dragonflies. You'll see the three markets we're trading, the E-mini S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, and Russell 2000. Let's look at a list of condors. Now, again, the algorithm has pre-built these trades for us, anywhere from 16 to 65 days till expiration uh, on this particular day. So you can choose from any one of these trades here. You'll see the strike prices are already chosen for us, your maximum profit potential at expiration, and this is called the targeted annualized return. So this number here is really to compare one condor to another. It's not to suggest you're going to generate a 330% annualized return just because you place this one trade. Uh, all right, now let's look at this one trade here. I typically randomly just pick the one with the most days till expiration when I'm doing these demos. And perhaps I could, there you go, just expand on that. Maybe that's a little too big. There we go, okay. So you'll notice you can see a table here and we're gonna jump into some of this in just a moment. But one thing I like to do is look at a graph and you can see calls here on the uh, top of the chart and puts on the bottom. Then the current market sitting right around here. So you can see this wide margin of error here. Uh, it looks like uh, over um, about a thousand point spread, uh, one thousand and uh, si uh, sixty, uh, yeah, one thousand sixty point difference between the sold call and the sold put. So that's a pretty big wide margin of error there. Now you'll notice uh, days till expiration, the market up here. Here's your expiration date, settlement value on that position, two point seven five points. The net premium you're trying to collect, your put risk, call risk, commissions, available capital, cash required, profit potential, targeted return on cash, and then your targeted annualized return. And you'll notice here, these are the puts you're selling and the calls you're selling, and then the one you buy uh, as protection to hedge the position. Now you could change the strike price if you wanted, but that sort of defeats the whole idea. For theta trader you want to use what the algorithm is generating typically but you can change that if you want now let me point out the delta here so you have profit potential of 116 and the cash required of 883 and it seems sort of lopsided but remember you're looking at these higher probability outcomes because the delta is 9.89 on the put that you sell so that means there's over a 90% probability that this put that you're selling is going to expire out of the money. Same with the call, 6.98 on the delta. So over a 93% probability that these calls you sell will also expire out of the money. So you're looking at these uh, higher probability outcomes, uh, lots of base hits as we talked about. Always defaults to sell because you're selling the spread and collecting premium and always defaults to a quantity of one, but we'll change that to four, and you can see the numbers changing here as you do that. And each spread on a condor, we can just say, generally speaking, you need about $1,000 in margin. So we'll leave this alone, we'll do five of these, and we'll place that order. And there it is, it just assumed you're filled in the demo account. 
and the order is placed, just that simple. Now let me go back on the dashboard and I'm going to show you a really, really great feature in just a second. Uh, it's a time machine, really. It allows you to go backwards in time. You've never seen anything like this one particular feature, I'm, I'm sure. Just a moment. Let's look at a dragonfly while we're here. So here is the four dragonflies. The uh, robot behind the, the curtain here is deciding that is worthwhile to take a look at. First thing again, look at a graph. So you notice the calls and the puts on this uh, graph here. And you can see there's a 50 point difference between the one call you buy and then the four that you sell. And same thing with the puts. So that's sort of what this trade looks like. And the same type of uh, information here, you notice the cash required is $4,500. So just about 5,000 per dragonfly. And that's simply because you're doing a quantity of four puts and four calls. If you wanted to do two dragonflies, uh, then that would be eight puts and eight calls. Uh, and everything moves up in that same ratio. So you can see the profit potential is higher because you're doing a greater quantity. Your targeted return on cash is typically a little bit less on a dragonfly. And that's simply because you pay money to buy this call and this put as additional insurance on the position. So that's why uh, the math works the way it does. And again, you're selling the puts and calls. In this case, the higher probability outcomes here with these deltas. You're selling the spread. You're trying to collect that net premium. So we'll do two of these. You can see the cash required just over 9,000. We'll just leave that pricing there at 11 and a quarter. And that's it. It assumes you're filled. Now here's the real fun part. There is a trade simulator. You access it simply under this trading menu item here under simulator. And to save time, I've loaded some trades up here. Let me squeeze the screen back down. Okay, so here is a condor in the month August expiration. You can see the date here, July 6 of last year. And when this trade was placed, it had 57 days till expiration. So if you want to find out how this particular theta trade did, then you would use these tools here to go forward in time, uh, one day at a time. You could go backwards in time again. You could go all the way to the end or use the play button. So I'll go ahead and use that play button and explain a little bit what's happening here. So the RTI is green. That means do nothing. Even though you see the trade is a little bit negative, it doesn't matter to the RTI. It says do nothing. The trade is doing just fine. Use uh, theta decay to your advantage here. Trade's turning profitable. And RTI is still green. And then it turns blue. And what does that mean? That means take profits. And the really important key here is we can automate this so that when the RTI turns blue and issues a profit taking signal, you can have an order automatically submitted and close out that position for you. And we never hold things till expiration. So that as you see here on August 20 with 12 days till expiration, you had a profit taking signal. Theta decay worked its magic. Now, what if you had done a dragonfly on that same day, July 6, 2021? We'll compare that to the condor. Looks very similar. RTI is green, but look at this. It turned blue on August 4 with 28 days remaining. So this trade matured and was, you were able to take profits much, much earlier compared to the condor. And that's simply because of the different trade structure. Remember, you own this call uh, and you own this put as well. So, you know, in this case, the dragonfly structure provided you a benefit of allowing you to close out that trade. Uh, let's uh, see here on August 4. But had you had a condor, you had to wait till. August 20. So you're talking, you know, two weeks uh, longer to wait for the condor to mature 
compared to the, to the dragonflies. So that's why we really, really love the dragonflies. We'll, we'll still do condors at times, but we really love that dragonfly. Let's look at another one here. This is a bear hedge. And before I jump into that, I can just jump back here. You can see we have bear strategies at well. We looked at that in the slide presentation 10 minutes ago or so with the bear hedges. And as a review, There we go. As a review here, you're selling this out of the money call spread and you use that money to buy an out of the money put spread. So that's what this particular bear hedge looks like. And you can oftentimes do it for a credit. That negative means it's a credit. Maybe we'll do two of these and you'll place that order and just that simple. Now let's go back in time. And here's a bear hedge from January 4. And don't worry about the colors at the moment because remember we're long uh, these uh, this put spread here. So you can see here that the trade was green and profitable for the majority of its duration simply because the market started to drop and move in the direction that you wanted it to go and by the uh, end of this trade here it had a nice profit and that bear hedge worked out well so that's kind of how a bear hedge would work if the market moves in your favor of course we'll look at an example of another trade here when it goes against you but Let's take a look here at half dragonfly calls. So again, we looked at that on the slideshow, but if you want to do just half of a dragonfly, maybe just do the, if you're bearish, uh, maybe you want to sell just the call side of a dragonfly and collect the premium on selling those out of the money calls. So you'd go up here and you look at the half dragonfly strategy and we'll just pick this uh, September end of month. We'll just take a look at that one real quickly. So here's what it looks like. These are the calls that you'd be trading on this particular uh, theta trade. Maybe we'll do two of these. And again, the calls that you're selling have a delta of 6.84, so 93% probability these calls will expire out of the money. So that's what you want. You're trying to collect, and there you go. So let me jump over here to the half dragonflies. Let's see how these work out. So here you go with 49 days remaining, it turned blue, it said to take profits and you could close that out uh, automatically. And I'll show you how to do that with your settings. But again, Theta Decay worked perfectly on that one. And here is a Iron Condor from November. It's a uh, end of month December expiration. I'm not exactly sure, I can't quite remember what this one does, but let's look. So yellow, and orange that means elevated risk and you can see why it immediately ran up higher towards the upper boundary so the computer is saying do nothing but still be aware that you're getting close to a, a, a red rti which is too much risk and think about how you would feel if you didn't have this guidance you know would every day goes by here you wouldn't know exactly should i be in should i be out do i add to it do i cover it so that's why people like this automation to help. And then here you go. The answer is it's red, get out, too much risk, take your loss and move on. So that's an example of what can happen, of course, the market moves too quickly in one direction. And in this case, it moved too quickly uh, upwards and put too much pressure on these uh, short calls up here. So you'd have to take your loss and move on. And you can automate this, and I'll show you how that works uh, in just a moment. Oh, I think I have the same trade here except for a dragonfly. So let's see what happens. I think these both end up um, losing, which 
that's fine. I want to show you winners and losers here, right? We don't just uh, sugarcoat things. So still, you can you can see how market's moving up just like it did with the uh, Condor trade, but you do not have a signal to get out yet, but you do right here. So uh, on uh, December 17, too much risk, get out. Now, let's look at a couple other others real quickly here. This is kind of a fun one. I remember this. Here's an iron condor. Let's see how this plays out. Oh, this one took a loss with 15 days remaining. You can see the market moved up pretty quickly here. So this is a trade placed on November 20 of 2019. Now, here's November 20, 2019. Instead of a condor, what if you had done the end of month dragonfly? So here, that's the end of month uh, condor. And we'll do the end of month dragonfly. Look at that, it actually turns blue and, and profitable with um, 29 days till expiration. So completely different dynamic in terms of how the dragonfly worked uh, compared to a condor. If you'd done a dragonfly, you would have had a, uh, a loss. If you would have done a con, uh, I'm sorry, if you'd done a condor, <laughs> you would have taken a loss. But at the same time, had you placed a dragonfly, the dragonfly trade, would have matured uh, as a profitable trade. So again, the dragonfly can be more robust in certain market conditions where uh, you end up with a winning trade compared to a condor that may have a losing trade. And also the dragonfly can allow you to get out of a trade earlier compared to the condor. All right, very good. And here's how you do all the uh, fun stuff to automate everything. You go right to your settings. And you simply click your risk manager here and the profit directive and then save those settings. And then that's automated, which means anytime the trade turns red or blue, whichever occurs first, the algorithm will then basically place that trade for you to close it out before expiration. We don't hold things uh, through expiration. All right. And... You should also be aware we have a section here on tutorials on how to use ThetaTrader. These are nice uh, little videos we put together. Uh, education on options trading if you need to refresh yourself on spreads and whatnot. There's a great help file here. This is kind of a nice little section. People want to know more about the color coding and how it works. It's all here. Don't want to spend time going through the details right now, but it is all here. And we also have daily research. This is our proprietary research. This is called TradeScope. We do this in-house only for clients. You'll see uh, technical analysis and review and forward guidance and so forth here. So that's great information. It's all very accessible in terms of uh, it's you know written at a level we can all understand. And then here's our daily trading summary. You'll see here, this is from uh, yesterday. Yesterday we sold a bunch of call spreads. Uh, those are working out great today, obviously. I think some of those were even already covered um, for a win, if I can if I can uh, think back here to earlier this morning when the market was down, S&P was down something like 60 something or maybe close to 70, but so that's done. This is a, a review of Asia, of Europe, of the US, what to look for, uh, moving forward, some technical support zones. Great information, all proprietary for our clients only. And we'll go back here to the home page and the dashboard. And I want to show you now the best feature of all. So be sure to stick around here. Give me just a second. And of course, you can go backwards in time and look at all your positions and whatnot. You can see everything on the dashboard, though, as well. Uh, just like this. So with that said, I am going to switch over to a, di a different screen.
Okay, folks. Very good. I think we're all looking at the same page here, as far as I can tell. That's sometimes the tricky thing about webinars. You want to make sure that the audience, all you can see the same thing here that I think you're seeing. And it looks like we are on the right page here. So let's make it easier. Trade alerts. These are one minute, one touch responsive trade alerts. You'll receive an alert and you simply touch, accept, or reject, and that's all you have to do. These alerts are live, meaning they're integrated with your AltaVest account. So you touch accept and you place the order and that's it. You know, so uh, as it is now, I'm sure most of you are aware, maybe you have a trade alert service, but you'll receive a text or an email and it ex explains a trade on what to do to buy or sell X, Y, Z or whatever. But then you have to log into your uh, platform, your brokerage service, and then you have to copy the trade and hope you get it right. And believe me, I talk to people who get that wrong all the time, and it's a nightmare to try to back out of an error like that. It can cost a lot of money, especially a buy-sell error. So here's what it looks like. You'll receive a text message with a link. Here's the link here. You'll get an email as well. And you can see here there's a uh, a graph of the trade. And then there's a description here that's the model dragonfly spread and you'll see the account number the amount of premium being collected the quantity here uh, your days till expiration your targeted annualized return any current uh, futures prices there and i should also point out well excuse me here i should also point out that let me play this forward the quantity is already pre-sized for your account so everything is pre-sized and appropriate for your account the trade itself will not overlap with another trade so you're not going to end up you know selling or buying a bunch of the same strike prices and concentrate all your risk into one area so you can see here the quantity is already pre-selected and so forth and then if you like what you see and you want to accept that trade you simply touch accept and then our technology handles the rest everything flows through just like that all right so with that said how do you get involved how do you get started we have a theta trader membership of course it includes all the software you saw the theta trades the rti the trade simulator that software is valued at over thirty five hundred dollars annually but you also, of course, get the trade alerts. You saw the one-touch trade alert technology. Remember, these are integrated with your trading account with AltaVest. So everything you see is uh, basically seamless with your trading account. You simply touch accept. And then once your orders are filled and those trades are now in ThetaTrader, ThetaTrader scans the account and will monitor your positions. And when a signal turns red or blue, your order will automatically be submitted for you to close that position out. So that software really is invaluable and that ability to do that for you, $4,400 value on just the trade alerts. So the software itself, including the alerts valued at over $8,000. Now here's what people really, really love is we tie it all together with real people. We're real people doing real trading here. You have a private coach, a co-pilot, you can develop your trading strategy we're licensed, of course, and decades of experience. How much is that worth to you? It's probably worth a lot more than $7,500. But for what it's worth, let's just summarize the dollar figures here. Over $15,500 value for the software and the private coach. And then let's not forget, folks, we talked about our proprietary research, our trade alerts, uh, I'm sorry, our trade scope, and the daily trading summary and comments. And we do include the online video tutorials. That's just part of your software package. So that all totals $18,504. That includes everything, folks, your alerts, your software, your RTI, the private coach, all the proprietary research. How much? $29.97. That is the membership uh, fee to be part of this, but it's not because we're going to discount that heavily. We love doing live webinars. 
down to 797. And you know what? We'll do even better. You know, before the pandemic, we would do live events in person and it would be $4,000 for the membership. You have people come to the back of the room and fill out the forms on the table in the back and whatnot. But we like doing these live webinars, reaching a lot of people this way so we can give you greater value. So 80% off that retail rate. One low payment of 597. And that's uh, just to reiterate, one payment, 597. One time, not per year and not per quarter. And there's the link to make it happen. cf.altavest.com forward slash TT. And that's my direct phone number there. I welcome you. 949-236-6961. You can call me anytime if I'm on the phone or whatever. It'll go to someone else or voicemail will pick up. Now, no excuse, folks. Um, you have a 30-day guarantee on that membership fee. So if you sign up and decide for some reason it's not something you can move forward with, uh, just let us know. We'll rebate that membership fee within that 30-day window. No trouble there. So a few FAQs. Yes, futures and options are tax efficient. You can lower your combined uh, the tax rate on your trading by over 10%. Here's an example. If you're trading individual stocks, you'd have a rate of return of 12.6% in this example. I won't go through every detail, but you can pause it later if you'd like on a, on a replay even. We'll get that replay out by the way. But if you're doing futures options, you save over $2,000 in taxes simply because of the tax efficient nature. Uh, you have 60% of the gains are taxed at the lower longer term capital gains tax rate so that's the benefit and I'll, there's no more itemizing you just get your 1099 with your p l and then always consult your tax attorney or advisor of course and then ira yes you can do an ira there may be some financial or experience requirements so contact us uh, for details on that but people love iras self-directed iras investing with alternative assets absolutely now how about a few more questions people always ask why trade the e-minis well they're liquid efficient and cost effective and they're huge folks the e-mini S&P 500 out trades all ETFs around the world by over two and a half times so here's what that looks like here compared to the SPY the e-mini S&P is almost 10 times greater average daily dollar volume and then, of course, all ETFs um, combined, the E-mini S&P 500 is still greater by two and a half times. Bet you didn't know that. <laughs> so five reasons to trade these E-mini options, volume, liquidity, access. That means superior execution. ES options offer a cost savings of 4 to $15 per contract compared to SPX. And that means you have tight bid offer spreads, large market share. So you have all the strike prices, 100 annual expirations. You have granularity and coverage. So what that means is when our algorithm looks for strike prices and expirations, it's going to find what it needs to build the right trade so that you can keep your trades um, laddered and they're not concentrated one on top of another. So that is very, very helpful. And this is very important. So all these e-mini spreads I talked about, even the Dragonfly, when we you submit an order through us, our technology and and with the way the uh, the trading works in the CME group, and I'll show you that in a second. But everything is placed as one object at one price in one order. So you have a six-legged spread placed as one order at one net price. If you try to do that trading uh, stock options, you can't. You do a six-legged spread, a Dragonfly. And it's broken up into two different orders. And I've seen it, and it doesn't work. It's a nightmare. Then you have two, two separate trades to try to manage. Um, so that's a huge, huge advantage. Everything is done as an object at one net price when you're trading on the E-minis. And of course, another advantage to doing what we do, look, we're just tracking a couple indexes, not thousands of securities. Uh, margin is efficient, and there's a clear cost structure. It's not hidden. And I'll show you about that here in a second. Remember, these are all 
uh, E-mini futures options trade at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange on their electronic Globex market. So every order goes through Globex. Every order is treated the same if it's a one lot or a hundred lot. So there's no payment for order flow. That's ridiculous stuff. I don't even know how that's been legal for all these years, but it may not be much longer. So when you see other brokerages saying, hey, we have free trading, that's complete baloney. It's not free trading. What's happening here is, you know, these firms are getting fined. Uh, people are trying to save a penny, but they end up losing a nickel when they're trading with, quote, free brokerages. It says payment for order flows disguised commissions. If you want the broker to work for you, pay a commission. You know, nothing of value is truly ever free. And then, like I said, it may, may be over. That free trading party might, might be over soon. The SEC chief, chief is overhauling uh, how that works. So we'll see. I don't think it'll be around for much more. Um, but payment for order flow. And if you don't know what that means, is when you place your order with a typical stock brokerage firm online, that brokerage firm is not actually filling the order for you. It gets filled by a third-party market-making firm. Then they pay for that privilege to fill your order. And the only reason they pay is because they can exploit the order and the spread is wider. So you, you end up getting a worse fill. It's just that simple. So here, most popular trading apps generate a lot of revenue from this payment for order flow. They can make more money from options than regular stock. So that's why they do it with stock options. And you know, just to point out, we are not stock options. We are futures options. And this whole payment for order flow nonsense does not exist with what we do. So what are the commission rates? They're five and a quarter round turn on our E-minis. And if you look at some big box brokerage firms, here's something I took off a website. It says two and a quarter, but that's per side. And then you, you add more fees, uh, like clearing and exchange fees on top of that, which they don't even show you about or tell you much about on their website, ends up being higher than what we charge. So our rates are very competitive. And everything is net, by the way. As a reminder, performance is net of all trading costs. And everyone's performance is different because everyone is an individual self-directed account. Some people do trading differently than others. So just that simple. What size of an account? Well, we looked at some of the margin requirements, but we suggest at least 25,000 uh, for having some ability to trade some dragons and condors and other strategies and whatnot. And if you want a rebate from your membership, people love taking us up on this offer. $100,000 or more, and we'll rebate that membership fee 100%. If you do $50,000 up to $100,000, you'll get a 50% rebate of that membership fee. And again, types of accounts, uh, we mentioned IRA, uh, individual, joint, corporate trust, LLC, all the usual types of accounts. We can do all those, of course, as any uh, brokerage firm should be able to do. And then why Theta Trader and non correlated alternatives? So, why do you even want to do? Theta Trader and use strategies such as what we talked about. Well, it says here it may improve diversification and lower portfolio risk alternatives. I think there's a lot of truth in that. But look what's happening with uh, central bank fueled asset price appreciation, and that, of course, that's creating inflation. Here's the S&P 500, the blue line, and here's the Federal Reserve and the balance sheet since 2008. Basically, they're printing money is what that means. So look at that high correlation there. And now, of course, they're starting to uh, hike rates and pull the, I guess, the punch bowl away from the party. Meanwhile, inflation has just been picking our pockets. Look at this. This is back to 2000. Here's the value of a, of a dollar. Now down to 59 cents just in 22 years. So, you know, we're swimming upstream, folks, when the Fed, all they do is print money. They're just continuing to inflate the prices and uh, you need to do something more than just uh, put money in a bank that doesn't work inflation here is probably even higher than what we think if you calculate the cpi or the inflation numbers the way it was done in 1980 inflation is more like at 17 percent here's your headline year over year inflation is over nine percent now uh, produ producer price inflation surges back to neck, uh, record highs here. That's just from this morning. And then you have 
93% of Americans are looking at, uh, at a side hustle just because of inflation. A new study finds here jobless claims highest since November 21. So there's a lot going on. How about this? B of A now forecasting mild recession starting this year. And I think there's going to be many more following them. Deutsche Bank was uh, before them and Nomura. I think Goldman Sachs is probably thinking the same thing now. GDP estimates are now cut from 2.4% positive, they're now negative 1.2% for uh, GDP in the second quarter of 2022. Might even be worse than that. So here's what it looks like now, their estimates down here. And you know, this was back in April, I left this in, but they say here, this uh, author from Hedgeye, Keith McCullough, of this article, or not the author, but I guess the one featured in the article, he said the Fed always screws it up and the stocks will be in a bear market by summer. Well, looks like he was right on target. Um, says they're gonna keep tightening rates as the markets go down. So that's really what's happening, folks. So you had this um, recession, seemed like it was um, really not on the radar a few months ago. Now it looks like it's hard to avoid. So the Fed here, 40 year high inflation, unaffordable housing, worst consumer confidence, third worst uh, S&P performance year to date ever. The Fed is literally the source of problems they were meant to solve. So that's a pretty strong opinion, but I think the facts sort of speak for themselves. And you know, all these inflation deniers over the last few months and last year, now they're finally have no choice but to admit, you know, you got Yellen and um, uh, Fed Chair Powell, you know, even Biden, uh, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, you know, all these other institutions, they finally have no choice but to ignore, uh, not, to, <laughs> but to not ignore the alarming inflation data that basically they caused. I think you could fairly argue that. Meanwhile, inverted yield curve. So that's pretty nasty. That's a harbinger of recession. And small business optimism outlook crashes to record low yield curve inverts the most since 2007 biggest housing bubble ever. This is basically the ratio here of the value of the housing to income. Very unaffordable home buyers canceling deals at the highest rate since the start of the pandemic. So we've got a lot of doom and gloom here, don't I? But you've got this here. It's important to look at mean reversion. So here's the exponential growth trend, this green line. And the black line here is the S&P 500. So eventually prices seem to always historically mean revert. And so we've got a long way to go before we get back to this uh, trend line here. That 60-40 portfolio, um, probably not going to cut it, folks. Getting clobbered this year. I mean, as we know, you know, with yields moving higher, bonds have been going down as well. So nowhere to hide, really. But this is interesting. According to this particular uh, indicator, the stock market's return will be negative 3.3% in the next uh, decade based on this one single greatest predictor. And it's essentially the average household portfolio allocation to equities as a contrarian equity uh, indicator, meaning it's still very, very high. So this indicator in the stock market, the real return over the next decade will be minus 3.3%. And that's based off some statistics here. And this particular indicator says here, the 10 year horizon, 67.8%. Uh, correlation with that indicator. So that's pretty strong. So we like the low correlation that alternatives offer, such as what we're doing with ThetaTrader. Again, you can be very nimble and flexible with all these strategies. You don't want to rely on being passively long and just buying something and hanging onto it or reading social media about the latest you know, story or whatever. That's not going to work in the long run, folks. And you know, keep in mind, there are many periods of time where you, know, you could be 22, 25 years, whatever, where the market goes sideways. You know, you want to avoid those drawdowns. You know, even if you're down, well, let's state the obvious, you're down 50%, maybe in a stock portfolio, you need to generate 100% return just to get to back, uh, break even again. So keep that in mind. Look at this one here. Um, Bitcoin, if you're down 70%, you'd have to be up 233% to get back to even. So you want to avoid those large drawdowns. And hopefully, something like ThetaTrader and the strategies we're looking at can help you do that. 
you don't want to be in all in stocks that 60 40 portfolio is probably no better and you'd like to have a bit of a slice of your portfolio and alternatives such as what we're doing so that theta trader membership remember all market conditions on these stock indexes pre-selected spread trades automated trade exits uh, those integrated one touch trade alerts make your life easy uh, personal coaching we're here to help you there's the link right there there's the number so you don't want uh you don't want to feel broke like this poor guy here <laughs> so just a few simple steps you complete the order form here at this link you'll get your login credentials and an email with your uh, account opening instructions you can do that electronically and then your altavest account is then open and then you'll fund your account with a ach or a bank wire and that's how it works so again one time low payment 597 and you've got automated options alerts coaching there is the link there's my direct number and let's take a look here i think i answered a lot of questions as i went along the way i'm sorry yes we cannot uh, well unfortunately people always ask and i didn't mention this earlier but we, we cannot work with canadian clients for the most part or even in in the eu as well but if you have a unique situation let me know what it is uh, maybe you have a legal u.s residence um, that can work but uh, i wish we could work with you and yet we recommend uh, bare minimum if you're going to do a lot of dragonflies you probably need more like 50,000 to make this work um, yeah we can't take accounts less than that 25,000 or so it just doesn't really work it's not really in your best interest and let's see what other types of questions do we get here that I can see. Yeah, I think I covered everything quite thoroughly, but we will have a replay so you can review that as well. And other than that, you know, thanks for joining us and thanks for um, being with us. Uh, hopefully you learned a lot here. We've, we're right at about an hour and I think I've been uh, talking your, in your ear long enough. So with that said, we'll let you get going. Have a great day and I look forward to hearing from you. All right, bye-bye.